How am I supposed to follow you up, Mr. Hines? I mean, that was a comedy routine right there. Very well played. No, but thank you very much. Uh, it's always great to, to get back here. And uh, I, I know that in April at the Tramps, uh, I got real emotional. Real emotional. Just because I, I'm not back here that often. And when I get to see all of you, it just, uh, this is a very special place. So tonight I want to talk about how grateful I am for all of you. So first let me thank all of the officials that are on the uh, selection committee. I appreciate it and I also want you to know that I appreciate you working with me. My wife is a head women's basketball coach and last year her team had, uh, it w there was a conflict and I asked for a special provision to be able to push this back one year. So um, I, I know we've, as everyone at my table said, I, I have five minutes to talk. And uh, so Mr. Fazola, Mr. Levero, Uncle Tony, I'll, I'll be quick because we got a 6.45 flight tomorrow morning, Woj. I got to get my wife back. She's got a game at 4 o'clock. Um, but thank you very much to Hal Kilby and Mr. Callett. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, to the other inductees, congratulations. What an honor. What a class to go in. And I, I, again, I'm, I'm very grateful. And, and, and if you don't, bear with me here for a second. I just want to name a couple of thought coaches. Dan Belanger, Rick Pergaki, Phil Manorino, Marty Solis, Dave Greenleaf, Tony Carrier, Tom Moylan, Hal Kilby, Ron Jones, Bill Hallowaddy, Gino Johnson, Tony Lodovico, Jim Bates Sr., Mike Givinazzo, Bob Freemuth, and Jack Stallings. If I called your name, can you stand up for me? If I called your name, stand up. What I learned from these gentlemen, and, and, and I can tell you right now, is servant leadership. These gentlemen gave all their time away from their families to help us as youth here in the city of Bristol, and, and I, I'm truly honored. And, and I mean, there's so many stories I could tell. Ron Jones, when I was about 12 years old, teaching me how to take a pitch in the back. <laughs> you gotta go like this! Watch out if you pee blood, just be careful, you'll be okay. My dad still tells that story. I felt like even though I was about 11 or 12 years old where I grew up on Melrose Street, I was, in the, I was pretty close to the fields at Bristol Central. And I felt like I should have gotten a varsity award because every time Plainville played there or any time Mr. Carrier's teams played, I felt like I was on that team because I could hear them from inside my house with just how loud they were. And if none of you have ever been worthy enough to sit in the hallway at Bristol Central on the stairwell for a pre-Tony Carrier speech to get you riled up, it's, uh, it's, it's quite an experience, I can tell you that right now. And then Coach Freemuth told me flat out, if you're over five minutes, I'm leaving. And he said, just, just hurry up. But I think the best line was Mr. Ziogas. Mr. Ziogas, Greg Ziogas, I saw him the other night at the boys club and he came up to me, straight up to me, and he said, I don't want to hear the same speech you gave in April. It's all the same people. It's all the same people. I, I do want to say how grateful I am to Jim Bates Jr. In 1985, I, I, I had big dreams, and one of those was, I think I was, I was in eighth grade, and I got cut from the tryouts for the Legion team, and things weren't going that well with the Monaghan team, and um, he wrote me a letter. I still read it to this day. He texted me, and I told Daryl, and I told uh, Joey Jandrell, I said, he texted me today to say, to make sure that those guys understood how much he was proud of them and how much he enjoyed watching them play. And he said if there was ever one guy that he needed in, on his team to get ahead, he said he would call Joey Jandrell any day. All right. So I want to thank for, uh, also, I want to thank the uh, Bristol Legion, because if it wasn't for the Bristol Legion in 1998, in 1988, New England Regional uh, host, we got into the regionals. I don't know where my career would have gone. I, I was fortunate enough to have a pretty good uh, series, and a lot of college coaches started calling me after that, and I had a dream. I, I wanted to go with the big boys, and so I went down south, and, it all, and it, eventually it all worked out. But I'll tell you, what a great man, Daku Huli. I think I, we all deserve to give him a round of applause. <laughs> Hell, Kilby was my coach for my three years of Legions. I appreciate it, but I mean, what an experience growing up in Bristol. Jimmy Danis, Jeff Howes, Adam Arberios, Ryan R. Walker, Spooner DeLucia, these were guys I grew up watching play. I'd race down from McCabe Waters, I'd get down there, I couldn't wait to watch the Legion. Tommy Burns at the helm, the excitement, a couple thousand people at Muzzy Field, they'd be up in the trees watching. I mean, what a great 
experience for youth baseball, and I'm honored to be a part of that. I also want to thank my Aunt Deb, Joanne Galati, Kim Corbin, Karen Pargaki, Libby Lodovico, Laura Lishness, and Kathy Ferrier. I love sport all over, and what they showed me was, I, I can't tell you how I much I, I watch all sport, but their competitiveness. Kim Corbin was my teammate when girls really didn't play baseball. She made the all-star team. I think she might have been the first female to make the all-star team at McCabe Waters. And I don't understand that, but what an experience at a time when Title IX had just come into play and, and, and the impact and the power of watching them go on to have success. I want to thank Chippy Raffanello. Here's why. You gotta, I'll tell you why. So, so Keithy and I were good buds, and, and Chippy and my dad were good friends, and, and my dad was always looking for the next bed, best thing and opportunity-wise, and he, he goes to Mr. Reffin and he says, hey, it's Christmas break, we're on vacation, and he says, there's a really good hitting clinic going on. Where's it at? Tufts University. How many days? Five days. What are we going to do? Who is it? Walt Hereniak. He's the hitting coach of the Boston Red Sox. And if any of you know my dad with the Red Sox, I think he likes him just a little bit. <laughs> so anyways, it woke up at 4.30 in the morning every day, and Chippy Raff and my dad drove me and Keithy up. We slept the whole way. We'd go up there for an hour and a half hitting camp and drive back. That's sacrifice, and I, I really appreciate that because um, Hereniak and the Charlie Lyle theory really helped me in hitting. It, it gave me a different philosophy and a way to look at it, and it was really beneficial, and I appreciate that. I got to thank Chris Peterson. For those of you that are in uh, high school ball here, he was a kid over in Southington. The reason why is when I was looking to transfer, Petey was the starting shortstop at Georgia Southern University. And I can honestly tell, I know there's a lot of you that have grandkids and kids that are looking to go to college and just how important the right school is. I was talking with Woj's daughter Annie and she was talking about how excited she is to go through this process. And, 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 and his, her mom was saying how you just know when it's the right school. And, and, and with Petey being there, he helped to facilitate it was probably an NCAA violation the way they waited for me and we talked three people. I never talked to the coach. I talked to Petey who stood right next to me, but the coach was right there and the coach would ask him a question. He would ask me a question. I would respond back to him. Hey, we got the job done. Either way, that's, sorry. Uh, anyways, uh, but, but when, and, and Jack Stallings is another individual who was probably the greatest fundamental baseball coach I, I ever played for and he really helped to develop me and my game. Just. The man learned how to turn a double play by Jackie Robinson. He was a rifle through the Red Sox organization. He had, unfortunately had polio, but I really learned a lot about the game of baseball with him, but I also learned about life. I'll tell you a real quick story. I know I got no more time. <laughs> so in, in 1993, we're playing against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's the number one team in the country, and I'm, I'm playing second base, and it's a seventh inning. We're up one nothing, and I swing in a fastball up in my eyes. Up in my eyes, I swing, I miss, I strike out. Oh, I was so mad. End of the inning, I had a guy on third base, we don't get him in. I go out in the field, I'm still, I'm, I'm fired up. You know, I'm Italian from West End of Bristol a little bit, I'm just fighting with it. And a ground ball gets hit to me, bam, right through the wickets. I mean, right through the middle of my legs, and now I'm worried they're going to tie it. Luckily, we get out of it. An inning later, uh, there's a play at second base, and I, and if you know anything about college baseball, you're not allowed to hit the second baseman as a runner. In the big leagues, you can do that, but they protect the second baseman. One of the guys from Tech barrel rolled me, and he should have been out. Well, I start going off on the umpire, and I mean, I'm going pretty good. And my coach, Coach Stallings, who never came out of the dugout, comes out. Now, he's got polio, and he's coming out, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, this umpire's going to get it. He came out and stood right by the umpire and the entire time for a good five minutes, he cussed me out like it was his job. And I'm like, what is going on here? After the game, he calls me and he's like, Wilson, get into my office. It was the end of the bench. He goes, I got one word for you. I'm going to tell you this word. Think about it tonight, come back tomorrow. And he basically, and this is 1993, he was ahead of his time. He said, the word is control. He goes, I, I want you to think about what that word means and I want you to tell me tomorrow. I go back to him, I think all that, I don't know what he's talking about. He's like, you gotta stop worrying about what you can't control and focus on what you can. And when I learned that and built and entrusted in that process, it really helped to open up a lot of things to me. So last, as we go through here, and I just wanna wind down, and I also wanna talk about, you know, my mom, thank you very much. I love you. You've taught me how to be a great parent and unconditional love. To my dad, I'll, I'll tell you this right now, my dad, there was, there was many a car ride that I would say white knuckles. There was many a car ride where we thought the steering wheel was gonna come off the column. 
There was many a time where, it, it, well, let me put it this way. I can remember in Legion Baseball, my dad, if you ever know my dad, he, he wasn't afraid to say his opinion. And one of my good teammates, Scott Gaudette, was struggling on the mound one day. And you know what, Muzzy Field, the, the voices carry, and he's up there. He's done. Get him out. Get him out. This is my teammate. I'm like, what the hell? So after the game, he and I had a little conversation, and I said, listen, I love the passion, but you know, you're know, you embarrassing me, and that's not the right thing to do. So he goes way down the left field corner, all by himself. Some of you might remember this. He goes down, I mean, he's a lone wolf down there, and before you know it, there's about seven or eight guys in his posse that now all of a sudden won't sit with their wives anymore. They all go down there, and they don't think the voices carry off the pine trees. I learned, uh, I, I learned a few words I had never heard before <laughs> during their time there. But again, my, my dad was always someone, I said this before, he never said no. He gave me a lot of time and he was always willing to work with me. And, and I appreciate that and they've always supported me. And lastly, I'll say about um, my Georgia Southern experience. It uh, gave me the opportunity to meet my wife. I still remember the first day, <laughs> this is funny. I remember the first day my wife came to Georgia Southern and I meet her in the hallway and uh, head coach introduced, there's our new recruit coordinator, associate, assistant head coach, Lisa Nuxall. I went home that night and I told my roommate who was a college basketball player and, and, and everything, I said, I met your future wife. He's six seven, she's six foot and I just was so excited, I met your future wife and lo and behold did I know that about four or five years later that you know we would start up a relationship. She's my partner. My best friend gave me the greatest gift of our son, Rakuch. <laughs> In 2003, you saw the picture right there. I was fortunate to caddy at Augusta National. And at that time, I, I went out one day on the range, and there was Mr. Palmer. Arnold Palmer uh, was up hitting some balls, and he and my head coach were roommates together at Wake Forest. So I went right up there, and I shook hands real quick, and I introduced myself. And I always followed Mr. Parmalee and I res respected him so much. And he, and he had a quote here I want to end with. When he was asked about his hometown in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, he said, your hometown is not where you're from. It's who you are. I'm Bristol. I thank you very much. Good evening. <laughs>